Okay, we're going to take a look at partial payments or deposits on, on sales in Odoo. Uh, there are two ways to do this, and the, both methods work fine really at any point, but one of them is better on a, say, a more complex sale than, uh, than the other option. So let's take a look at the two. We're going to start with a simple sale first. Uh, let's uh, sell something here to Marvin. And Marvin's going to buy some widgets. Red widget. We don't need the gift certificate add-on. Uh, he's going to buy five of them. And they are $200 each. And um, so this is a part for Marvin's car. And he's just uh, saying he's paying, I don't know, by phone with Visa. And he wants to put a deposit down so that he can make sure that they don't sell out. And then he's going to come in and pick this up later. But there's not going to be other, any other changes expected to this sale. We just know he's buying this and he's only paying partial now. So it's in quote status right now. So we, we know he's buying it so we can confirm this and it's going to become a sale order. And let's create the invoice for him to pay. So you have two options. There's a regular invoice or there's a down payment invoice. Now whether you choose percentage or fixed amount, that's the same thing. The only difference is... The percentage is here for it to calculate by percentage if you decide that um, you want to you want to make it a percentage and then you don't have to do the math. But uh, in this case, we're just going to create a regular invoice and then pay part of that invoice. So let's create a draft invoice. And now that we've done that, we can confirm it. It's, it's draft right now. So we'll just confirm it. Now it's posted and we can pay it. So let's put half down. Well, let's put $400 down. So don't set your price before you set your payment. Go in order. Um, I'll show you why, actually. If we put an amount down like this and we change, say, this, it'll reset. So not ideal, but you should just always go in order. I don't know why you wouldn't. Um, so let's uh, say we're paying by Visa and we're taking $400 on this. We'll create that payment and it's going to create a partial payment on this invoice. And there's $650, including tax, still owing. So that's it. Now, if we take a look at the sale order. Uh, now, we're not doing this in POS, so the delivery will also have to be confirmed, meaning uh, that we've, if, if the customer is picking it up in store, if we're shipping it, it's different, but if he's picking it up in store, we, we just have to mark this as picked up. And if you're in POS, POS will skip this because it, when you're using POS, that's like a till, and they assume that, we do will assume that you're handing it to the customer and it'll be removed from stock. Uh, so let's say now Marvin comes in, he's going to pay for his part and pick it up. So let's head over to the invoice and register the final amount. So he's paying by Visa again, and the amount is 650, perfect. There we go, the invoice is now fully paid. We can print it and email it to him if we want here. And now if we look at the sale order, this is done. The uh, delivery though, because we're not using POS, we just have to mark this as handed to the customer. So he has all five, so we'll just, it's in ready status. If you're shipping this out, it's the same thing. When you ship it, you just validate it to done so we know it's shipped. And now everything is complete on this sale. Okay, now let's look at a more complicated situation where somebody is buying uh, parts for their car at the service shop, they're getting them installed, and while the car is there, you know, that maybe there's going to be more, and there's going to be some upsells uh, where, you know, there's some things that are broken on the vehicle or some things that they can do to I don't know, make the car faster if it's for performance or give the car more power, I guess. Um, let's look at that scenario. So let's create another quote here. So this would be Marvin again. And same thing. He needs five red widgets for his car. And five of those at $200. And... Uh, what else does he need? He needs a, an, uh, an oil sending unit. Sure. One of those for $117. So he's going to get that installed. So there's going to be some labor on this as well. But for now, that's all. Now, because Marvin has a bill that's over $1,000, we require a deposit. So we require, say, a $500 deposit. So we're going to take that deposit. But there might be some more things added to this sale. So if we now confirm this, so that goes from quote to sale order, 
will create our invoice. Now, if we were to choose regular invoice, we can do that and he can pay partial on the invoice. And then when there are more products and the service added to the sale, um, we would just create another invoice and Marvin would end up paying the balance of the first one we created, which has these initial parts on it. And then the parts that we added and the labor that we add later, I will go on that second invoice. That's not ideal because for Marvin, it's all one project for his car. And ideally he'd like to have all of the parts and the labor for that project on one invoice. So that's why Odoo has this down payment method. So if we use a down payment, the down payments will go on one invoice, but all of the products will end up getting put on the final invoice as long, along with the service. And in fact, Odoo will also note the down payments on that final invoice. So that one piece of paper will give, if you print it, that the one invoice, however they have it, will have all of the information that the customer needs should they have warranty or needs or anything down the road. Okay, so let's take that $500 deposit. Oops. Create the draft invoice here and we'll just confirm it. And we'll take the payment. Okay, it's paid. So now when we look at this sale, we have the uh, $500 deposit invoice is posted and paid. And the sale order is still pending here until the vehicle is complete. Now you can see that Odoo added uh, down payments uh, note here and put the down payment below it. Um, now when we add more products it's going to add them to the bottom of the invoice so you still need to drag these to organize it. Um, you don't need to but it's nice if you do because it makes it the invoice nice and clean for the customer later but uh, um, that's it's nice that it just adds that note because if the customer needed well let's let's do that let's say uh, we have an upsell and uh, we find out that we can put a turbo on this vehicle for the customer and that's going to give him the horsepower he's looking for uh, did we get a turbo out of that? Not really. Oh, it's because I didn't put turbo. T-U-R-B-O. So here's one. Do we have stock? I'm just going to enter here. Save to see if we have stock. Uh, we don't. So what's happening here is we would have to actually order this in. Um, what I'm going to do actually is just put one in stock just for our purposes of the demo here. We'll pretend we had this in stock. So all I'm doing is making a quick inventory adjustment, putting one of these in stock. So now I've added one and you can see that now this is the forecast is green, meaning that we have one of these to sell. So that's on there. And let's say now that we're adding this, we want another, uh, oh, another $400 deposit from the customer. So we're going to take actually a second deposit. So we just create a down payment invoice. This time we want $400 and you can see already invoiced 500, 4632 left. So we're going to take that down by another 400. Now, what you might notice is we took a $400 deposit and Odoo has made two line items and it's calculated taxes on uh, portions of that deposit. So what it's done is it's put, it's split up the deposit against the products the equal portion applied to each based on the price of the product. So this 278, of course, is for that turbo, the higher priced item. It doesn't really matter. You can see that it nets out to $400. That's what matters. But just in case you're wondering why there's two line items here. Okay, so let's just confirm this and take his money. Now looking at the sale. So we're doing pretty good. We got an upsell on that vehicle and we got a um, deposit on the parts. So we're going to kind of keep things organized here. We'll just move this above so all the down payments are in one place. And then finally Marvin comes to pick up the vehicle. Well we've got to make sure we add our labor. So there's some labor on there. And you can see we're charging shop supplies as well so we have that set up. And uh, so the labor there was nine hours of labor. And also we had some more service. He wanted the vehicle detailed. And that was another three hours. And we can actually put that in here as a uh, detail service. And while he was in there, he was thirsty and he bought an energy drink. Okay, so there's our total sales, 7,131.85. Now, if we create an invoice, and this time 
he's picking up the vehicle, so we'll create a regular invoice. So you can see that we've already invoiced $900. The amount left to invoice is $62,3185. So we'll do, we'll create that final invoice. And $62,3185. And you can see that it actually ends up adding another down payment here. That's a, a little glitch Odoo has, but you can just trash that one. It's just a label, so it doesn't really matter, but it's nice to move it. Um, and that energy drink maybe will remove from down payments as well. So really easy to quickly clean it up. I guess it would have made more sense to do this. There we go. So now all the products are up here. These are down here. You can always add more labels or sections or whatever you want, of course, just using uh, the tools here. But this looks good to me. So let's uh, confirm this and take his money. So now we're going to take the final amount of 62.3185. Uh, he's paying by MasterCard because he's burnt up his visa. This is now paid. You can see the amount is registered at the bottom here. Uh, you can send and print the invoice. And you can go back to the sale if you want and take a look at things. And of course, again, because we're not using POS, uh, where POS skips this uh, delivery, uh, we need to take the products out of stock. So the invoices are all paid here, but we have to uh, mark these as delivered. Now, everything's already in stock, so, I mean, we can check availability, but we already know it's there. So everything's good to go. Um, so we can validate this, and it'll go to done. There we go. Everything's delivered. Everything's paid for. Marvin can unmark the keys, and he can take his car.